friends, I'm Elizabeth of Elway Crochet and this is my monthly update for the beginning of March. I didn't film last month, I just didn't feel like I had all that much to share so um, this will be a summary of two months worth of what I've been working on. Um, trying not to put too much pressure on myself to be crafty and rather just enjoy the process and the finished items. Um, yeah. I have started working on another sort of tutorial video series. Um, let me know if you'd be interested in a series on um, how to crochet a migurumi and like all the different tips that I think are really important. Um, so I've started writing up some notes for that. But yeah, let me know if you'd be keen to see that and learn a bit more about how to do a migurumi. If you don't know, a migurumi is like the little crocheted creatures. So like this little bunny. Or this little reindeer, which I made for Christmas a couple of years ago. That sort of thing. So, yeah. I'll get into what I've been making. Um, so, for finished objects, I finally finished this knitted blanket. It is for... So, two of my friends recently had babies. They're both due in February. Um, I think one was born this week on the 26th was a little boy named Jude and on the 15th of February was a little girl named Alice so very exciting this is knitted blanket for Alice um, yeah her parents like the color blue so that's what this is and I finally finished it it's a diagonal knit blanket so I just started at this end and you kind of knit all the way across and I've explained how to make the pattern um, with the increases and stuff uh, in a previous video. It's pretty straightforward. I also have a Ravelry project page for this and that links to um, a free pattern from Line Brand. There's heaps of different patterns. You can make like washcloth size or blanket size. Uh, you just keep going until it's the size you want. So yeah, this one's a rectangle. It's about 30 by 36 inches. I can't remember how much that is in centimeters. But, um, yeah, so it was made with uh, Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury 8 Ply, and so it's a really nice yarn. Um, I was thinking about making a cotton blanket, but they do live in an area that's a little bit, like, because the baby's in February, so it's kind of summer, but um, they do live in an area that's a bit colder than where I am, so the warm would work well for them. So yeah, that one took me quite a while. I do have a bit of yarn left over from that actually, so I could use it for something. Um, I also uh, finished my first pair of knitted socks. Well, my first pair of any socks. I still haven't finished a pair of crocheted socks either. So these are made with, I think, one of the Regia yarns um, from Arnie and Carlos. And the pattern is also their pattern, the easiest socks in the world. And so, yeah, I just knitted from the toe up. And I did the afterthought heel. So when I did that, I just had a bit of yarn in there um, just to hold the spot. And then I pulled that out and knitted the heel on there. Um, it's a bit pointy, but you can't tell once you put it on. They are a little bit tight on me though. I probably should have used maybe a slightly bigger needle. I used a two millimeter needle for this and it was 60 stitches around this part um, so I've started another pair of socks and I've changed up some things for that but yeah they probably could have been a bit longer in this way as well like it maybe doesn't stretch as much quite as much as you'd want but I'm not sure they're a little bit tight but they work and they're lots of fun I really love the self striping um, pattern because it makes me excited to keep going even though it's predictable, you know what the next stripe will look like. But it's still it's a bit more motivating than just a plain colour sock. Um, I also, this month, even though um, this particular challenge was in February, um, so it was a challenge run by Frenchie at Aroha Knit. She did a five shawls in five days challenge. I think she's done it before, um, but she ran it again in January, but we were in Tasmania in January, which is also why I didn't do a whole heap of knitting. Or crocheting um, 
Yeah, so after we got home, I decided to do her five shawls in five days challenge. I didn't finish it quite in five days, but it was a really good um, learning experience about different shawl shapes for knitting. So I made all these tiny little shawls. This was day one, and so it's a little triangle shawl. This is one of the most common, most basic shapes of knitted shawls. Um, and then uh, I think this was day two or three, maybe. This is a little three kind of triangle shawl. A little crescent one. And this fun long, long triangular one. And then this one was real hard to start off, especially once I got a couple of rows done, it was easier. So this is a square one, so it starts in the middle. And what I ended up doing was I just had a huge hole in the middle. So I just sewed my end thread around in a circle uh, to close that up. And that's the only reason it looks acceptable because there was a hole like that big before. Um, I also decided this month to get into a couple of other hobbies. Um, I you might be able to tell, I'm wearing some bracelets. So I made these myself with some beads from Spotlight. This one's really a bit bigger than I would like. It moves around a lot. So this was the first one I made and then I made this one. So we've got some pink beads and some kind of white with gold bits and then a couple little gold beads in the middle. So just like a little elastic thread. Uh, you can see they're not there, but you know, I think that's all right. Um, yeah, so I might give this bigger one to someone else because um, it just moves around a little bit too much on my wrist. I do have pretty small wrists apparently and while I was at Spotlight um, the reason I went to Spotlight in this particular time was because I've seen and I have a couple of those like little charms on little stitch markers and then but I only have two I think or maybe three I had three and I wanted to get some more um, so I had two little teapots and one with a little bead and I think I'd mostly got them for free when I'd ordered yarn or that sort of thing. So I was at Spotlight and I found some little charms and bits to make my own. So I've just got them on my traveler's notebook at the moment. But here's a couple of the ones I made. There's, uh, there was a little set of um, some teapots and some little test tubes. So I'm thinking I might like, you can, this can come off. So I think I might fill it with something and then glue it so that the cork doesn't come off while it's filled with something. Um, if you're interested at all in a traveler's notebook, um, I love it. It ha like you have these elastic bands in the top, so you can have all these little notebooks in here for all different things. I've got a little pouch for some post-it notes. There's one notebook that I've got in here, which is just blank pages. There's another one which is line pages. This one I made, which is brown paper, and this one at the front I made too, and under this clip. Um, we did print it with some like calendar pages but I only did a few of those so I've run out now. Um, but yeah I'm really enjoying, I don't use it a whole lot like I could use it a lot more. Um, I have a lot of stamps and washi tape and I used to do a little bit of scrapbooking as a kid so um, traveler's notebooks and all the like journaling stuff I'm really I think I'm into it, but then I just don't stick with stuff. So this is handy. I can just jot down things and whatever. Moving on to actual crafty things. But yeah, a couple more stitch markers. So I have two of this one and three of this one. Um, actually, I have three of these teapots because I had one already that someone else had sent me that was basically the same. It has some little pink paint around in that gap. The gap between the lid and the teapot itself. So I've got a few of those, and I made some other ones as gifts for a couple of friends who had their birthdays last weekend, well, their parties last weekend at least. Um, so I'll just put the picture up. Um, yeah, I found a couple of sets of charms at Spotlight uh, that I really liked. There were some where they have packets where it's like 20 of the same thing, and I didn't really want to do that. So I found a set that was like a sewing set, and so you can see the needle and the thimble, the spool and the scissors were all from one set, and then the teacups and the teapot. There was a set that here had two of the teacups and the brown teapot and then that other silver teapot I showed you. So I got a couple of each of those sets and made some gifts. Which was nice. 
So that's all of my finished objects, would you believe, for two whole months. But anyway, I spent a lot of time knitting. I'll also show you, I've spent a lot of time, this is one of my works in progress, working on this cross stitch. So this, um, it's called, eventually it's going to say the art of tea underneath here and then underneath each teacup there's kind of like a different word that goes in like create or grow or inspire that kind of stuff um, I just really like the teacups there's gonna be like a background thing as well which I might pull that out because uh, in reality I miscounted the number of stitches I did this one first and then these two and then I went down to this one I miscounted the number of stitches here which means it's okay for all the teacups but then the background is a bit funny. So I think I want to base the background off this one because there's still another two rows of teacups above. Um, we'll see. I think I'll finish the teacups before I go and do the background. This is my little needle holder. It's a little magnet with some fabric on it that I bought online and it's just got my little needle on there. But yeah, I really like this. So this is a ruler, a butterfly, pencil, flower. This one's gonna have a bird on there and a little sprig of leaves sticking out. Um, I can't remember what's on this one. I think it's a paintbrush. Yeah, there's a paintbrush with this teacup. And yeah, then there's another six up here as well. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. Um, it's really good. That's the main thing I've kind of worked on the last two weeks. I also started um, another I started crocheting something so when I heard that one of my friends had had a little girl um, I wanted to crochet so I w we went to um, there was a shop near us that a craft shop that was closing down a few weeks ago so they were having a big sale so I went and I found this yarn it's um, Peyton's eight ply Dreamtime merino which I've used before and I really like it but I really like this color as well and that was the day we'd found out that they'd had a little girl and so I picked up this yarn think I'd make something for them but um, probably DK weight yarn is not which is 8 ply not the best uh, yarn for a newborn baby in retrospect but anyway I think also the pattern I was using or am using um, the pattern says it's for 8 ply or DK weight yarn but then you download the PDF and it says it's for worsted weight yarn. And then you look at the type of yarn that whoever made it used. And the type of yarn is a five ply or sport weight. And I just, I'm making the zero to six month size. It's meant to be a dress. So there's a few more rows to go at the bottom. But I don't, and like I tested my gauge. It's not a gauge issue. My gauge matches their gauge in the pattern. I mean, I held a two day old baby yesterday. It was nowhere near this big. So I'm not sure if I've done something wrong here and, cause the pattern is not the most instructive. Like a lot of times I've been like, well, I only know what's happening because I've done enough crochet to be aware of what you mean. So, Yeah, I might hold on to this until the kids maybe like one or two. <laughs> I don't really know how old, how big kids are, but um, a newborn baby is not this big. Or a six month old baby. So, uh, yeah, that's a little disappointing, but at least it's bigger so I can always hold on to it and just give it to them later or I'll give it to someone else later. Um, yeah, I've also been uh, coming back to this I started making this top with some of my knit crate yarn from a couple of months ago. I really liked this color. Um, I'm really happy I got this color. In fact, what happened actually was that they said in this particular month they were sending me the artisan crate. But then I think there was a mix up and I got the wrong box. Um, and I just sent them a message being like, oh hey, just a bit disappointed because my email did say I was getting the artisan crate. And then they really kindly sent me artisan crate and even asked me what color I wanted so this is the one I got and the pattern is not from Nick right the pattern is called a Risu but the yarn is a linen hemp and silk blend 
And so the pattern is for a linen yarn. So yeah, I did get a bit stuck for a while on this. I started it quite a few months ago, you might have seen before. Um, and as per usual, I really enjoyed the going round and round just in stocking it. I also really enjoyed the lace section because it's interesting. But then once you get to where you split for the sleeves, or the armholes, there's not sleeves. Um, and you have to go back and forth, and so you have to do, every second row was a pearl row. That, that really slowed me down. I didn't work on it for quite a while. I haven't worked on it for a while at the moment again. Um, but yeah, you can see I've been doing some of the neckline, at least on this side. Um, I do find it tricky to count the rows and keep track of how many rows I've done. Um, but we're getting there. Oh, I'm getting there. And yeah, it was meant to be a summer top as well, and summer's kind of coming to an end, but hey, maybe for next year. But yeah, it's really nice fabric. I think the silk definitely helps. And also, in terms of coming back to oldish projects, this one's much older, I've started working on my blurred line sweater again. Um, this is by Deanne of Adida Designs. Hers, her design is meant to be like a faded sweater or jumper, we mostly call it in Australia. <laughs> um, and so it kind of, she'll use one color to about here and then fade into the next color. Um, I decided I just wanted to use one color of yarn, like as in one yarn. Obviously, so there's multiple colors in this, but just one uh, colorway of yarn because I liked it so much. So I bought the yarn last year at a celebration of wool in Canberra. Um, but then last winter, um, I just got really stuck on making this. I found it really hard because you have to alternate skeins so that you don't get like just lumps of the same color everywhere. And I just found it really frustrating having to change between different yarns every round for the sleeves, because the sleeves are quite short rounds compared to obviously the body. Um, but I've been working on it. I picked it up again um, just the other day. Um, this this is the stitch markers I was talking about. So this is one of the ones I made and this is one I already had. And so this one marks the row where I started the other day and this one marks the beginning of the decrease rows. Uh, so yeah. And in fact, one of my favorite things about this, what you're actually looking at. So that's the front of the half double crochet stitch, but it's designed so that you wear it with this side on the outside and so it kind of looks a little bit like knitting but not it's like I don't know I think that looks really cool anyway that side of the stitch compared to that like that looks all right this looks really cool um, so and like I've had some I was enjoying getting back into the rhythm of making it um, and then I tried it on which was obviously a mistake <laughs> Because I didn't, I haven't worked on it since I tried it on. But my issue was, I tried it on and I just felt like it was much more fitted than I wanted it to be. Um, I had a couple of people message me on Instagram because I put it up on Instagram stories, including Deanne, suggesting blocking it will help. And I think, I think it will help. Like, it gets a bit of, like, a bit of stretch in it that way. So I think it will help it be less fitted. Um, and I suppose, because I was thinking about starting it over, which would be really disappointing. Cause I spent so much time on this last year <laughs> and all I have is finish that sleeve and do this sleeve and I'm thinking even I'll just do three quarter length sleeves maybe which I'm nearly there because this comes just past my elbow which sounds weird maybe I have short arms well maybe it's just at my elbow yeah, this comes just at my elbow. So if I'm going to do three quarter length sleeves, I don't think Deanne has specific instructions for doing the three quarter length, um, but I think I can just work it out. Because she made her original prototype with three quarter length sleeves. So obviously on this, on the normal design, the cuff has a thumb hole in it, which I really like, but I'm just not sure. Um, if I want to keep working on it for that long or even if it's that practical because obviously if you've got hand dyed yarn that's covering most of your hand it's gonna have more wear and tear and you're gonna be more worried about destroying it or getting it wet or getting it dirty 
And so you, you're gonna, I'm gonna be putting it up my arm anyway. And I do like, I have a knitted jumper, the Netherton one with three quarter length sleeves. And I do like it. And it really doesn't get that cold here. <laughs> like it does, but not in the grand scheme of things. So, probably a three quarter length sleeve will be enough. But maybe we'll keep crocheting around and around for a few more rows on this one, this sleeve, and then I'll start the other sleeve. And I'll see how we go. Because I have enough separate balls of yarn that I could do that. Although actually I'll end up in a tangle, won't I? We'll see. But yes, I'm enjoying, enjoying working on this. So the yarn, was f called Solidarity. Um, it's from, I bought it from Three Mums Yarn, but it was a, um, like a collab between Three Mums Yarn and Fiber Lily. So both Australian dyers, um, Three Mums Yarn was at the Celebration of War, which is in May, which in Canberra, which I'm looking forward to going to again this year. Um, Probably means driving down to Canberra and back in one day, which is fine. <laughs> it's a bit of a bit of a trek, but it's manageable. Um, but I think this year uh, I'll take my husband. He's interested. I think he's interested. Um, yeah, I'll see if there's any yarn he likes. I want to knit him a jumper, but um, he's he's time for a tangent. Um, he's been he losing some weight recently. So he said to wait until he'd um, lost most of it before we pick a size and start working on something. He has lost about 16 kilos in the last three months. So he's doing really well. Um, so probably by May, he'll be getting pretty close to his goal weight. Which is very exciting. He's doing, yeah, he's doing really well to stick to it. But yeah, it won't be fingering weight. It'll probably be DK or worsted weight that I will be making him a jumper in. He's not getting a fingering weight one. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Takes too long, like look how many stitches are in that. And also knitting is a bit slower, so. But yeah, if I have this done by a celebration of war, I'll probably wear it, which will be very exciting. Yeah, so that's the, that's the side that will be the outside. I just, oh, it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I need to finish it. I really want to finish it. But I hope it's a bit less fitted once I block it. But I don't want to block it too harshly that it destroys the yarn. I'll just show you. Um, so these are the two cakes I'm working for at the moment. A bit of a mess. But just to get a picture of some of the yarn. So... Some bits have more pink in them and some bits have less pink, um, which is why it's, yeah, important to alternate skeins. This one, oh yeah, working for the center. Uh, yeah. So yeah, some of them have more pale parts and some have darker parts and more or less color in different parts of them. Yeah. And then, obviously those two couple of works in progress, a bit too complicated. Well, the cross stitch and the arisu and the blurred lines all a bit too complicated and a bit too big to actually take places. Like, I like to knit or crochet in church, which might sound crazy. Like, I'm still paying attention when I'm listening to the talk and everything in church. But I just find, if I'm keeping my hands busy, I'm less likely to get distracted. My brain's less likely to wander off. Um, So yeah, if I've got something to do with my hands, I generally am more focused, which is not like an unusual thing really. So in my little tote to go go project bag, this little present, my little pin I got from Knit Crate in January, I think, which is very exciting. I think it was January, might not have been. I've been working on another pair of knitted socks. And here's another one of my little stitch markers. I didn't make this one either. I have a little a double pointed needle in here for cables and I just stab myself with it. See so yeah, I'm just using 
I mean, a fairly straightforward toe up sock pattern, but you can see I've done a little cable here. I got this book from a bookshop. Matt picked it out actually for me. And let's see if I can find the page. There's heaps of different stuff in this book. Like, there's all these different stages, like you kind of work up to, um... oh look, here's different round motifs as well, like, like this square, but without the holes in the things. So they would have a different increase than the increase I used in my little shawl. I don't know what page it was on, but this is where I got the cables from. Oh yes, so there's some cables. I'll just show you quick because, um, you know. So this is the little one I'm doing. So I'm just doing one little cable on each sock. Just keeping it simple, but keeping it a little bit interesting. I'm using my little hexagon stitch markers. Gold hexagons. So yeah, the good thing about doing it two at a time is that I'm not very consistent at the number of rows I do between each cable. So I think I started with only three rows between each cable and then now I've changed to about four. But the thing is, because it's two at a time, they match each other. So as long as, yeah, each one matches, it's all good, right? So I think that's fine. So this yarn um, is actually a, um, a gradient yarn. So it starts off light pink with little bits of yellow and blue in there. And then it goes into a little bit of a darker pink. So it's not a heaps obvious gradient, but it's a little 250 grams. And yeah, a little gradient. So it's from um, Mel at Mahogany Turtle. And I used some of her yarn last year in my blur shawl. The one that went from, I think, green to purple. And I really love that yarn. And so this one I got as well, and so making some socks. And she actually sent me, I think, a matching one to this as a prize, and I gave another set. Yeah, so I gave that to someone else as a prize. One of the winners from when I did the blur along. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying this. So this is knit with a magic loop, um, so it's a little bit confusing to get your head around. But basically, you just pull the needles through until they're where you need to be. And so, I'll see if I can do it backwards so you can see. Not, I'm not going to knit it backwards, that would be impossible. So yeah, this needle goes into the sock. And then, you bring the back one around. So this is the front, the needle's in there. The back one around, your yarn's here. So it'll be at the front knitting if you're just knitting and then you just work a knit from this needle and work across there and then you do the same thing across the front of this sock I hope that makes a little bit of sense if it doesn't just look up on YouTube um, magic loop socks two at a time or even just magic loop and s someone else will be able to explain it better than me in terms of stash enhancements, there's not too much. I already showed you the Peyton's, the purple DK weight yarn. Um, so I got that, yeah, at a yarn shop, or actually it was a craft shop that closed down kind of near to us, and so they had a big sale. So a few, few other things I got there. I also got this like little embroidery thread holder, which is really handy. So these are all the colors for my cross stitch. I mean, most of them, the one which is the background color is, there's heaps of it, so it's in a drawer. The thing is, obviously I can't, I don't know what colour is what here, so I've just stuck a little circle on it with all the labels. Um, so that's on the back. But yeah, a little kitty cat and a butterfly with all my threads. Um, I also picked up this lovely brown uh, fabric, which is kind of like, I think I could do cross stitch on this. So what I'm thinking, I'm not sure about a design that I'd want to do if I want to find one online or make something up. But I was thinking maybe like just doing something in all black might look really nice on the brown um, or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. 
yeah, if you have any suggestions of designs I could do that would look good on this, like, because I don't think something colourful would be all that great, um, but I think something black would make it stand out really nicely. Maybe even white. But yeah, let me know what you think, what colour I should use, and if you have any designs that might work well on that. I did pick up a couple of other things while I'm there, just like little bits and pieces. Um, yeah, and then I suppose one last thing. I, I've really been enjoying knitting lately. Um, so one of the things I want to do is a knitted faded jumper. So there's a couple, I've bought, <laughs> I've bought the patterns of two different ones, but I don't think, I'm not going to make both of them. I think I'll only make one, at least this year, with no specific plans to make the other one. Um, so either Spectre, which I think is by Hohi Locatelli, um, or So Faded, which is by Drea Renee Knits. Not certain that those are the way. It could be the other way around. Um, but for a while, I've had this yarn from Ren and Ollie. And I've used Ren and Ollie yarn a couple of times. Um, both fingering or sock weight and... DK weight. I really, I love the colours and I love the yarn that she has as a base. But with these, I wanted to use them together in a fade. But you can see there's quite a big difference between these two, um, especially compared to these two. So uh, she had a, Ren and Ollie had a stock update um, a little while ago now. And I was like looking at all the yarns and I actually commented being like, um, asking for a recommendation of what she would put between this one, which is Pop Rocks, and this one, which is Teacup. And then this one is called Velvet Cloak. And she had a few suggestions. Um, her main one she recommended was called Biscotti. And so you look at it, it's kind of like a brown um, with like flecks of different like pinks and oranges. I'll take the tag off so you can see better. So looking at it first up, I suppose my first instinct is not necessarily to pick this one, but if you put it in here, I think that works really well. I'm really happy with her suggestion. Um, yeah. And so I think I'll probably lean towards the So Faded sweater rather than the um, Spectre. And then I was thinking hoping that I, the leftovers from that would be enough to maybe knit a pair of socks. And I also caught a couple of mini skeins from Red and Ollie. So this one's Vanilla Chai, which I love the name of, I love the colour. Look at that. And this one is Dreamscape, which I think also would have made a nice fourth colour in the big ones, but I already have the kind of darkest that I would want. So, yeah, if I could use the leftovers, and make socks, I think that would be really cool. Um, but we'll see how we go. I'm not sure how much I'll have left over each one. Might just have to do little socks. But yeah, that's kind of all that's been going on um, in terms of what I've been making. Um, I have also been spending quite a bit of time paying attention on Instagram to all the discussions happening around racism. Um, yeah, in the knitting community, but also in the world um, in general. And um, it's kind of part of why I didn't uh, film a video at the beginning of February, um, because I'm very aware that there are so many, you know, white women putting their voices out there on YouTube, uh, doing podcasts or videos or whatever. Um, and I didn't feel like I particularly needed to contribute to that um, amount. Just the overwhelming white presence when there's so many, there's so much, there is so much diversity in our knitting community, but it's just not reflected in sometimes in our magazines or in what we see online or in everywhere. But I think there are some magazines that are really working on that, um, which is great. And I'm, um, yeah, wanting to support those magazines, obviously, and wanting to support more um, makers of colour or... Um, yeah, so if you don't know, one of the main terms is 
BIPOC, so Black, Indigenous and People of Colour. Um, yeah, so we want to, I want to be seeing more of them in, yeah, different publications and also supporting more of them um, with my money and my time and my likes and but especially money. Like, it's so easy just to, I know most of the stuff I've shared today is from white women, but I'm working on it and um, I think you should too. That's primarily what I want to say is, yeah, get in and read what's been going on. There's an article on Vox. V-O-X is the website. So if you just Google Vox Knitting Racism, that article will pretty much sum up the discussion that's been happening. And if you have any questions from there, Google is a great resource um, to look up things like anything you have questions about rather than pestering the people of colour who have been generously educating so many people with their time and energy. They've probably been asked, some. there are some questions they've probably been asked 50 billion times. And so asking them again is just demanding more of the energy when it's often a question you could just Google very easily. Um, and it's yeah so generous of them that they are spending that time and energy to <laughs> educate people when they have no obligation to do that. Um, but yeah, so I'm working on yeah reading online and books um, more to educate myself on yeah, the different privileges that white women or white people in general hold. Um, doesn't mean that obviously there's not difficulties involved in your life if you are a white woman, but it means that you do hold certain privileges. Um, and I suppose for me not filming last month, um, it is a privilege that I have as a white woman to be, that I could be quiet on this issue, whereas people who People of colour, they experience racism all the time, so they can't just, you know, get back to knitting and forget about racism. So I don't think we should either. Anyway, I'll leave you with that to think about. Bye.